Most of us are well aware that terrestrial habitats can vary, whether deep woods or open fields. These certainly provide different environmental conditions, and the types of wildlife we find in each vary. In the same way, aquatic habitats vary. There are differences between small shallow lakes and large deep lakes, between slow-moving streams, fast-moving streams, large rivers. There are bodies of stagnant water and bogs and swamps with very little oxygen. The types of plant life vary greatly going from one aquatic habitat to the next. The type of insect larvae and other aquatic invertebrates that one finds can vary. Two aquatic habitats in our area, the Hudson River and the Delaware River, empty eventually into the ocean. And so therefore saltwater species can come upstream in order to lay their eggs and spawn. So just as we find different uh, animals in different terrestrial habitats, different types of fish can be found in different aquatic habitats. On land, many animals which try to reproduce sexually have the problem of identifying members of their species. So differences in coloration and different songs can be used by, say, males to identify themselves to females at the time of mating. Fish face similar problems, and many fish have color patterns which allow members of the same species to identify each other when they group together in schools and for mating. Some markings on fish appear different underwater than they do when a fish is examined on the surface. The algae and aquatic plants which occur in different aquatic habitats can vary considerably. The type of vegetation found in an aquatic habitat can influence which aquatic species can survive there. For example, here one can see the very dense uh, growth of lily pads uh, creates a network of stems underwater which inhibits uh, movement and would affect the fish which would be able to inhabit this area. Oxygen levels can vary greatly in different aquatic habitats. While slow-moving water, such as swamps and bogs, might have so little oxygen that very few fish species would be able to live there, fast-moving streams aerate their water and thus would be able to uh, support fish species which would require greater levels of oxygen. Many species of insect which live near water have points in their life cycle where there is a mass maturation from pupal stages into adult stages and many of these adults have a limited time period to mate near water and lay their eggs for their aquatic larvae. Thus there are times where fish can greatly supplement their food supplies by feeding on the insects which occur near water. Some fish and other aquatic organisms specialize in decomposing dead prey. Many fish die, and at certain times of the year there may be mass migrations of a marine species up a river such as the Hudson or the Delaware to spawn and lay their eggs. After laying eggs, many fish such as the shad then die, and thus the adult shad then provide uh, food sources for decomposers.